Despite what the brochure you got from that animatronic monkey may have told you, themed restaurants were not invented by Rainforest Cafe in the 1990s. People have been throwing down cash at novelty eateries since the 1930s, but the 90s experienced a boom in gimmicky chow houses, the likes of which hasn't been the same since. So today, we're going to take a look at the craziest themed restaurants from the 90s. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. After that, please leave a comment and let us know what other kinds of nostalgic restaurants you would like to hear about. Okay, time to get thematic. If there's one thing Hollywood does better than anyone, it's endlessly recycling profitable ideas until people lose interest in them. And the idea for Planet Hollywood did come from a movie producer. His name was Keith Barish, and his basic pitch was to do a version of the Hard Rock Cafe for movie fans. The Hard Rock's owner, Robert Earl, loved the idea, and he reasoned that movie stars could be persuaded to help promote the chain through a deal by which they would receive a portion of ownership in exchange for appearing at restaurant openings staged to look like film premieres. And he was right. Who wouldn't want to walk the red carpet with a basket of chicken tenders named after a Schwarzenegger movie, Redditor? In 1991, Planet Hollywood opened its doors in New York City with the backing of major movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, and Sylvester Stallone. As envisioned, it was a movie premiere-style spectacle with the marquee backers and other celebrities in attendance. Well, it's kind of like a party at my place on a Friday at night, except um, I don't have the celebrities or the carpet or Elton John doesn't sing, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. Things went well for a while, and Planet Hollywood grew to over 100 locations, but the chain wouldn't prove to have the staying power of the hard rock. Planet Hollywood Hollywood started losing money quickly. After its first Las Vegas casino venture failed, stocks fell, and the celebrity backers began jumping ship. As of 2023, there are just six restaurants and five Planet Hollywood branded hotels still operating. Huh, small world. In the world of wrestling, there's nothing bigger than the WWE, which back in the 1990s, prior to some legal action by the World Wildlife Fund, was still called the WWF. Presumably, there was some confusion when people in denim vests kept showing up to wildlife fundraisers and suplexing the pandas. In 1999, WWF chairman Vince McMahon opened the first, and what would ultimately be only, location in the Paramount Theater in New York's Times Square. The place was a combination restaurant, nightclub, and souvenir shop that even had a barricaded cage room where hopefully you'd be allowed to challenge your server to a test of strength to earn their tip. Pay-per-view events were broadcast directly from the restaurant itself, and shows like Monday Night Raw would often use the location in various segments, and the dishes were all themed around wrestlers. So like macho nachos and a Hulk hoagie, I guess. No, wait, Hogan's should be a hot dog. The place even turned up in WWF video games. In 2002, when the WWF became the WWE, the restaurant was renamed The World. Apparently, the concept of wrestling had also sued Vince McMahon, but the rebrand didn't last long. The WWE decided to get out of the restaurant business, and the New York location closed in 2003. If iconic film director Steven Spielberg were to open a themed restaurant, what do you think the theme would be? One of his blockbuster movies, perhaps? Uh, uh, uh. Nope, the answer was submarines. Come on, guys, Jaws. It was right there. Built like a giant yellow submarine and hosting a nautical theme, diners at the restaurant called Dive were given the illusion that they were eating deep under the sea, like the people trapped in the galley on the Titanic. The food is really different, the decor is terrific. According to the restaurant's advertising, patrons were invited to enjoy sublime food in a playful submerged environment with bubbling porthole windows, gauges, an underwater video voyage, and working periscope with panoramic city views. In case you couldn't tell, the place was submarine themed. And it was all Spielberg's idea, apparently inspired by his little-known love of the sea and underwater exploration. He and producing partner Jeffrey Katzenberg, who later teamed up with Spielberg to create DreamWorks, devised the plan for Dive in 1993. The restaurant's first location opened in Los Angeles in 1994. As advertised, the restaurant was bedecked in nautical finery, and every 45 minutes, there was a 30-second submerging of the submarine-shaped eatery. The portholes bubbled over, lights flashed, and submarine moans and groans filled the dining room. Because nothing makes a meal more unforgettable than the simulated threat of violent implosion. Despite being a well-known hangout for celebrities, the original LA site closed in 1999. 
And while Steady Souvenir Sales kept a second location in Las Vegas open a little longer, it finally closed in the early 2000s. All three of us have Jewish mothers that says it's good to have a little something on the side. <laughs> Except my, my, my mother was saw a dive and her first comment was, that's the biggest piece of trafe I've ever seen. <laughs> The first American Girl Cafe opened in 1998 at the American Girl Place store in Chicago. Billed as doll-friendly dining, the eateries were designed as a way to make a trip to an American Girl store an even more memorable outing. Or at least, to keep kids there a little longer so that they might annoy their parents into buying more doll accessories. The eateries in New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago are large, somewhat frilly affairs, while other locations are known as bistros and are significantly smaller. And while not all American Girl stores have a cafe, all of the American Girl cafes have special seats for diners' dolls to join them at the table. And if you don't have your own doll to bring with you, don't worry. Diners are offered the chance to borrow one if they so desire. Man, is there any part of this experience that doesn't sound like a saw trap? wish you could eat dinner on Mars? In the year 2112 specifically? Well, back in 1998, a guy named Pascal M. Phelan had that same dream, but instead of whining about it like you, he opened Mars 2112. The restaurant's theme was space travel, and diners ate amongst alien and spaceship decor, like an indoor kid's bedroom. The elevator looked like a UFO, the dishes all had space-related names, and the employees all wore futuristic regalia. I know I was awfully nervous the first time I met Interstellar Royalty. Phelan described the place as a fusion of fun and good food and fantasy, which honestly doesn't sound so bad, but it does sound like a lot of work for a hamburger. When the New York City location opened in Times Square in November of 1998, it was the largest theme restaurant in the world, standing three stories tall. In 2000, a second location opened in a mall in Schaumburg, Illinois, because as the famous song about New York goes, if you can make it there, you can make it in Schaumburg, Illinois. Mars 2112 struggled to make ends meet and actually filed for bankruptcy twice. After an incident in 2011 where the New York location famously refused to let Shaquille O'Neal in because he wasn't dressed properly, things got dicey. How could you not be dressed properly for the space diner? Did they want him to wear a helmet? And while the Shaq debacle may not be the direct cause, the Times Square site and the franchise with it closed in 2012. Founded by Mort Bank, who previously operated several themed McDonald's – wait, you can own a themed McDonald's? The first Space Aliens Grill and Bar opened in Bismarck, North Dakota in 1997, before expanding into a handful of other locations. There's still one open in Fargo. Yep, Fargo. The restaurants are decorated with alien-themed furnishings, have large dome ceilings painted to look like outer space, and include plenty of space-centric games for kids. The dining areas, which have names like The Bar for Mars and Area 51, serve American food. Most popular item on the menu are fire-roasted pizza and barbecued ribs, just like Mom made back at home planet Zebulon. There's plenty of Space Aliens merchandise if you want something to take home with you, including Space Aliens clothing, beverage containers, spices, and sauces. Today, Space Aliens Grill & Bar continues to go where few themed restaurants of the 90s have gone before, into sustained profitability. Remember Robert Earl? He was the owner of the Hard Rock Cafe and one of the people behind Planet Hollywood. Well, he was also responsible for the official All-Star Cafe, a chain of theme restaurants celebrating the worldwide of sports. This man caused incalculable damage to the mozzarella stick community. After the initial success of Planet Hollywood, Earl saw an opportunity to capitalize on the most American of all pastimes. And like the movie stars of Planet Hollywood, he enlisted celebrity athletes like Andre Agassi, Wayne Gretzky, Ken Griffey Jr., Shaquille O'Neal, Joe Montana, and Monica Seles to invest in the business. The first official all-star cafe, which served traditional sports food, opened in New York City in 1995. The walls were adorned with such iconic pieces of sports memorabilia as Agassiz's ponytail and the first backboard O'Neill ever smashed. And the booths resembled oversized baseball gloves. The ground floor of the New York City location was a 5,000-square-foot gift shop because you're not really a success unless you're selling t-shirts. In 1999, the cafe's parent company filed for bankruptcy and locations began closing. The last location, at Disney's Wide World of Sports, closed its doors in September of 2007. And that was game over for the official All-Star Cafe.
Rainforest Cafe is a place that gives diners a unique experience of dining in a tropical rainforest. You know, if tropical rainforest were Chuck E. Cheese's for adults in the middle of a shopping mall. The first Rainforest Cafe opened in Minnesota's Mall of America in February 1994. Decked out with foliage, animal figures, mist, and waterfalls, the restaurant features a menu of mostly Americanized food, despite the fact that the U.S. has no rainforests. Owner Steven Schusler's concept for Rainforest Cafe actually first took shape as a result of his home makeover. And I wanted to have cascading waterfalls, soothing mists. They said that it was absolutely impossible. So I decided to take it a little bit further. I transformed my St. Louis Park, Minnesota home into the Rainforest Cafe. Listen, the guy was really into rainforests. According to his autobiography, his home contained 40 tropical birds, 250-pound tortoises, a baboon, an iguana, and a bevy of tropical fish housed in 10 300-gallon fish tanks. And just like Schusler's house, the cafe contained live animals too. On a regular schedule throughout operating hours, mock thunderstorms broke out inside, the lights would dim, lightning would flash, thunder would roll, and the sound of falling rain was pumped through the sound system. People must have thought it was cool because within days, the wait for a table stretched as long as three hours. That's a long time to wait for airport quality food served against the backdrop of animatronic gorillas. As of 2023, Rainforest Cafe still has 23 locations open around the globe. Merchandise is for sale at every store location, including stuffed animals, toys, dinnerware, and exotic finds. Just like in the real rainforest. If you've ever wanted to eat waffle fries in the presence of supermodels, Fashion Cafe was the oasis you were searching for. It's finally happening. Hollywood rarely gives us glamour, so why not? You know, we've got Planet Hollywood. Why not one for the girls? The idea behind Fashion Cafe was similar to Planet Hollywood and the official All-Star Cafe, except instead of movie stars or athletes, supermodels promoted the restaurant. However, unlike those other enterprises, the models were not part owners but paid spokespeople who would simply receive a portion of the eatery's future profits. But just like Planet Hollywood, the people promoting the joint wouldn't eat a single thing on the menu. The Fashion Cafe was actually the brainchild of Italian entrepreneurial brothers Francesco and Tommaso Budi. Tommaso came to New York City from Italy in 1989 and started making connections within the city's real estate and celebrity circles. Recognizing the sudden popularity of runway models, he joined forces with his brother to open the first location in Rockefeller Center in the spring of 1995. The gala opening of Fashion Cafe was set up like a red carpet, except instead of a blockbuster movie, it was a place that served pizza and hamburgers. Among the attendees were spokesmodels Christy Turlington, Naomi Campbell, Elle McPherson, and Claudia Schiffer, as well as Gianna and Donatella Versace, David Copperfield, and Stephen Dorff. Wait, was he invited or did he just kind of show up? The restaurant was decorated with trendy outfits once worn by the most popular models of the day. And of course, Fashion Cafe sold plenty of branded merchandise. Despite some initial success, every Fashion Cafe location closed, and in 2000, the Booty Brothers faced 51 federal counts each of conspiracy, fraud, and money laundering in their handling of Fashion Cafe's finances. But in 2021, Tommaso Booty was pardoned by President Donald Trump. Inspired by a company founded by the titular character in the movie Forrest Gump, the Bubba Gum Shrimp Company, which opened its first location in 1996 in Monterey, California, is a seafood restaurant featuring mostly southern and Cajun dishes. Most of the dishes are named after characters from the popular 1994 film. People must love the Run Chicken Run salad because the chain sells roughly a million pounds of shrimp a year. What, no Lieutenant Dan cakes? That's just leaving money on the table. As of 2023, there are 34 locations in operation. Each is decorated with a nautical theme and memorabilia from the movie. Interestingly, actor Chris Pratt was discovered while waiting tables at a Bubba Gum Shrimp Company in Maui, Hawaii. The Gumper of the year right here, thank you. Maybe they should have called that place Planet Hollywood. So what do you think? Did you ever eat at any of these restaurants? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other weird history food videos.